Please be seated. Good afternoon to everyone and welcome to the Christian marriage of Sophia Spiegelberg and Jacob Bitter. Hopefully everyone has a program to follow this afternoon. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ came as an invited guest to the wedding at Cana, and with his gracious presence, he brought joy and gladness to those who were there. Jesus is also with us who have gathered in his name to celebrate with the word of God and prayer the marriage of Jacob and Sophia. We are assured of God's gracious help and guidance in these words from the Psalms. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. He is good to all. God is our refuge and strength. And never present help in trouble. He is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even to the end. May God be gracious to us and bless us. And may his face shine on us. Let us pray. Loving Father, we are grateful for your goodness to Jacob and Sophia as they share their joy on this special day. Look on them with favor and strengthen their confidence in your firm promises and assure them of your abiding love. As your son Jesus graced the wedding at Cana with his presence, so may he be with us who pray in his name. Amen. We join in our opening hymn. The first lesson that Jacob and Sophia have chosen for their wedding day is Psalm 126, a reminder that the Lord is the source of all of our blessings and our joy. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. 
Restore our fortunes, Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. And those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. This is God's word. And your second lesson is from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Today you join together as partners for life, as husband and wife. Paul reminds us here that you enjoy another partnership with each other and with, with our fellow Christians here and really Christians around the world, a partnership in the gospel, in receiving and sharing the good news of Jesus. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the, d- the day of Christ Jesus. It is right for me to feel this way about all of you, since I have you in my heart. And whether I am chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight. This is God's word. We continue with our next hymn.
This afternoon, Jacob and Sophia have chosen a beautiful portion of Scripture taken from 1 John chapter 4, beginning at verse 16 and going down through verse 19 as their wedding text today. Uh, we're going to read 1 John chapter 4, 16 to 19. First of all, in St. Lucian Creole, kind of the heart language of a little island, St. Lucia, down in the Caribbean where Sophia grew up. And then we will read it in English, the heart language of North Dakota, of where Jacob grew up. <laughs> Here then is the word of God. 1 John chapter 4, verse 16. Epise con sa nu vini conet, epi que lamitie abondie ni pu nuan. Lamitie se kawakte bondie, epi puesan ki weste, mache a lamitie kai weste, mache a bodie epi bondie kai weste a che moon sala. Epi sa se manye a nu kai ple epi lamitie consa. Nu pe ni confiance a su ju jimana, paske non jezi kia, se consa nu yi a late sala. Kote kini lamitie pa sani pe pewez, lamitie meme ka tiwe pewez andi dante a moon, paske pewez meme se a pinision. Si amun ni pewez andi dai, savle di moon sala pioko ple epi lamitie bondie. And verse 19. Nuni lamitie apwezan paske bondie, tine lamitie pu nun avan. 1 John 4, 16 to 19. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how, we, how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. And then verse 19 we love because he first loved us. Friends and family, both new and old, for all those who have gathered here today, the wedding party looking very nice today, well done, and especially to you, uh, Jacob and Sophia, as we've gathered in God's house today. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Is it a little weird having your dad do the sermon and the service today? Yeah? No? Not so much? Just especially for you two, I have limited my sermon to just one point with six subpoints and then a couple of illustrations for each one. But it'll go quick, don't worry. No, I'm just teasing. Sophia was a little worried that I would embarrass her today, but I won't do that. Uh, but what we have gathered here today is to encourage you in the commitment that you're making to one another uh, for two reasons. I, I think, first of all, because marriage in general has kind of taken a beating in the world these days. Um, and I think also because as you enter into this very, very special relationship, just the encouragement that you both need in God's Word. You, you, you all may have seen that um, in the world today. Weddings are way down. I don't know if you know that, not just because of COVID, but the average age for a man and women 50 years ago to get married was 19 for women and 21 for men. You know what it is today? 27 for women and 29 for men. In fact, 38% of Americans over the age of 18 will never get married. So more than a third throughout the United States. So marriage sometimes takes a bit of a beating. You know the statistics as far as if marriages make it or not in our world today. And, and sometimes even when you look to friends for advice or how to do things, and I'm sure everybody gives lots of advice, you don't always hear the biggest, greatest things about marriage. I heard this from a good friend of mine just recently. You ever heard this one? Um, what did, uh, when Adam wanted a wife, he went to his Lord and he said, Lord, what's it going to cost me? And the Lord said, an arm and a leg. He said, what can I get for a rib? Yeah, that was a joke. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, but you know that uh, wedding sometimes gets a little beat up. And, and I think that sometimes on the other side of it, we tend to try to, for those of us who cherish marriages and weddings and all that comes with it, we try to protect it. We do it with traditions. We do it with the things that we are used to, with more laws, lots of rules, all those sorts of things, because marriage is such a beautiful 
thing. In fact, I heard that in India, true story, uh, marriage is a big deal. It has to do with property rights and everything else. And it just so happens that if the younger brother gets married before the older brother, that traditionally they'll marry the older brother to a tree in the morning, true story, and then the younger brother can go on with the wedding so that everything goes on to normal. Ben, thankfully you're engaged. We got that covered. You're good to go. But you do know that, that marriage is sometimes not always looked in that way. And, and, and I think that's one of the reasons why it is incredibly important what you two did. You proposed and you said yes, and that was a good thing. I still have Jacob's message on our church answering machine where he said, oh, Pastor Spiegelberg, I have something I need to talk to you about. It's great. My secretary and I listen to it all the time. <laughs> yeah. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. But, but the next thing that you did was this. You went and looked at the author of marriage, one of the strongest and most relationships that human beings can partake in. And you went and you did your premarital counseling, not with either one of your fathers who are well suited to do it, although granted that probably would be a little awkward to do it with your parents. Yeah, but, but you went to the Word of God and you took a look at what marriage was. And the reason was because it's not marriage that is broken. It, it's not marriage that there's something wrong with. But the real problem lies not in what God instituted way back before the world fell into sin. But really the two biggest problems in any marriage are the groom and the bride, right? Which is why the portion of scripture that you guys picked today is, is, is so perfect and so beautiful. Because what it talks about is in order to have a marriage that lasts, in order to have a marriage uh, that the way that the Lord intended it, in order for you to carry out what the purpose the Lord has for you in your life, we need to go to the guy that was there before the imperfect world in which we live. Somebody that lived on the perfect side of all relationships, and that's Jesus Christ our Lord. And so we go to him, and, and, and exactly as John wrote, he said this in verse 16. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. And this is how he has made that love complete among us. In Greek, I had to throw in a little Greek for, you know, all the seminary students that are coming up. Yeah, uh, that word for it, may complete, telestai, means to bring to a perfect end. And, and, the, and the reason is, is because we realize that the Lord has not changed or fixed or anything else with marriage. Marriage is the same way that it always is, but he has done something to the two biggest problems in marriage, which are us, right? He, he has come and given his life in our place to forgive our sins. He has come to make us perfect and righteous in God's sight because of what he has done for us, right? It's, it's hard to live with somebody else. You guys have lived in dormitories with roommates before. How long now? Eight years? Going on a ninth year at Wisco? Woo! Yeah. Yeah. So you know how difficult it is to live with people especially when you get now in with the life with the, someone from the opposite sex. We have a tendency to be self-serving and self-motivated and focused on ourselves. And this is what causes problems in relationships and problems with our Lord and our Savior. So the Lord said, I tell you what, I love you enough. We're going to fix this problem. I'm going to die on the cross to take away your sins, to make you perfect in God's sight, to make your marriage perfect in the sense that he has redeemed us in that. And so even though we may go into marriage a little afraid, even as parents, it's sometimes scary to marry your children off, and yet the Lord says this, verse 18, there is no fear in love. We love because he first loved us. Nous ni la mitié à poison parce que bon ti ni la mitié pour nous avant. Jacob and Sophia most likely, everyone else will forget about the sermon on a wedding day. It's usually the DJ that gets more credit. We'll see how he pans out later on tonight. They might remember that joke. I hope they don't, because I don't want to spread that too far. But when you walk away out of God's house today and the Word of God and, and, and the encouragement that He's given us, I want you to remember this, right? Love one another unconditionally as God has loved you. Forgive each other unconditionally as God has forgiven you. And commit yourself to one another unconditionally as God has committed himself to you. And may the God of love keep you strong in your relationship to one another as you continue to grow strong in your relationship 
with him. May God bless you both. We love you much. Amen. We continue with the marriage rite. Dear friends, when God in love created the world, he made man and woman in his own image, and he bonded them together in marriage. Through this blessed union of husband and wife, God established the family and provided for the physical and the spiritual welfare of children and fostered the peace and stability of society. God intended marriage to bring loving companionship to the people of his world. But because of sin, the joy of marriage was soon overcast with sorrow, and the harmony of family life was shattered by strife. Out of love, God sent his son, Jesus, to die on the cross to take away the sins of all people. Everyone who believes in Jesus receives forgiveness and is enabled by the Holy Spirit to live in peace and joy. God's love for you is boundless. He commands you, in response to his love, to love each other. Love is forgiving and enduring. Love shows itself in truth and faithfulness, in thoughtfulness and understanding, in patience and kindness. And marriage furnishes a unique opportunity to put this love into practice. The pattern for Christian marriage is the intimate union of Christ and his church, which the Apostle Paul depicts in Ephesians chapter 5. After urging believers to submit to one another out of reverence for Christ, he makes this application for Christian spouses. Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church. And husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. It is reverence for Christ on the part of husband and wife that lays the foundation for Christian marriage. And you have come here to be united in marriage, which consists in your mutual consent, sincerely and freely given. And you are now invited to declare this intent in the presence of God and these witnesses. Jacob, will you take Sophia to be your wife? Will you be guided by the counsel and the direction that God has given in his word and love your wife as Christ loved the church? Will you be faithful to her and to cherish her and support her and help her in sickness and in health as long as you both shall live? If so, answer, I will. I will. And Sophia, will you take Jacob to be your husband? Will you be guided by the counsel and direction God has given in his word and submit to your husband as the church submits to Christ. Will you be faithful to him, cherish him, and support him, and help him in sickness and in health as long as you both shall live? If so, answer, I will. I will. Now join your right hands and make your promises to one another. I, Jacob, in the presence of God and these witnesses. I, Jacob, in the presence of God Take you, Sophia, to be my wife. Take you, Sophia, to be my wife. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. And I, Sophia, in the presence of God and these witnesses. I, Sophia, in the presence of God and these witnesses. Take you, Jacob, to be my husband. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. Now ex exchange rings as a symbol of the lifelong commitment and abiding love which you as husband and wife have promised to each other. Repeat after me. Sophia received this ring. Sophia received this ring as a symbol of my love and faithfulness. As a symbol of my love and faithfulness. In 
and Jacob received this ring. as a symbol of my love and faithfulness. As a symbol of my love and faithfulness. By their promises, Jacob and Sophia have bound themselves together in marriage before God and these witnesses. Therefore, I declare that they are husband and wife in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And those whom God has joined together, let no one separate. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit preserve you in faithfulness and strengthen you in love and guide you to life's end. Let us pray. Eternal God, source of love, help Jacob and Sophia to fulfill the promises that they have made here today and to reflect your steadfast love and their love for each other. Give them kindness and patience, affection and understanding, happiness and contentment. Use their family and friends to support them in difficult days that their love for each other may continue to grow as long as they live. Gracious Father, in your goodness, you bring people together into families and enrich their lives with abundant blessings. Renew the love of husbands and wives, parents and children, that they may strengthen and support each other on the way that leads to, the he to our heavenly home. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we join to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. And the Lord look on you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to present to you Mr. and Mrs. Jacob Fitter.